Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I want to show you this uh, neat little trick uh, that you can use when you want to consider like geometry right here that we got here uh, and treat all these separate pieces of geometry as individual parts of geometry, something like instances and then you can rotate around a center point of each instance and, uh, and th that's what happens right here. So this is a a pretty simple setup uh, so here we have a cube that's been instanced on points and we have a, a node point with five points so just like this we have five points and we we are uh, setting the position of these points to a random value between these two vectors and we if we change the seed you can see that these points change as well and uh, and then we use these points to instance this simple cube and and that's what happens here so these cubes are all instanced on these points and these are all instances so you can use the scale instances node or the rotate instances node and um, and so here we have like another random value to scale them so they all look different and, and then we can rotate these instances for example around the uh, z-axis like this and you can see that all these instances rotate around a lower left corner as you can see and, and this is pretty pretty useful when uh, working like this so all these geometries get rotated around a single point uh, but what happens and this happens a lot to me when I work with geometry nodes. What happens when, when you got like um, loose geometry? So if we realize this instances like here, and now these are all, uh, these are not longer instances. This is geometry because here you can see we have five instances and no vertices. And back here we have like 40 vertices because we have uh, these cubes, they've all become this mixed geometry of vertices, edges and faces and there's nothing to distinguish one from the another uh, apart from the mesh island node which is this one so uh, for those of you who do not know what mesh island is it's practically all connected geometry is considered one mesh island and you can see that for example if we store named attribute like this and we store this uh, index island index and yeah, let's just call it uh, whatever and, and you can see now that these first vertices the first eight vertices are mesh island zero then we have uh, mesh island one two three until we got to four which is actually the fifth uh, island because uh, there is also the zero index so this is what separates them but so what will we do if we wanted to rotate for example if we wanted to do the same thing we did before when we had instances so let's rotate each of these geometries around this lower left corner and we have that transform uh, geometry node which obviously will not work because it will rotate all of them and there's nothing to say to it uh, let's just think of these mesh islands as separate geometry so this one will not work uh, what we have then we have the set position node and then uh, vector rotate so we have the position and then vector rotate vector rotate and then we set it like this and then we could rotate around it uh, if we if we would only know the center of rotation for each of these vertices so for these vertices right here of this mesh island we would need this center of rotation for these we would need this center of rotation for for these we would have we would need this center of rotation so how do we get to that and and here is where this node that i created comes to help so this is my bb lowest highest how do i call it lowest highest field value comes to play and we need this uh, i will show you in a second 
the principle behind creating this node this is what goes on inside and so you can create uh, one of those yourselves or you can download it from the link in the description um, it's not free but it's uh, really just a symbolic uh, value that helps me to keep this channel up and running as always and so uh, and this one will also be part of the BB nodes add-on in the next update that's coming somewhere next week. So how do we use it, uh, this node? Uh, first we need to plug in the geometry and then we need the field that will change uh, based on what mesh island it belongs to and this that is our position uh, or even better our X and Y of the position vector so uh, so we need for our X field and then we're gonna need also the, our Y field and the last thing we need is the common value so we need some value that's only common to in this case a mesh island so this Geometry right here has the mesh island index of zero. This one has it of two, this one three, four, and, and so on. And so we need to plug in that. And this is something that I call common value. It's something that unites everything together and it separates all the rest. And we'll see in just a second inside this node why this is necessary. So our index of the island gets plugged in here and as output we will get the number of identical uh, values which is uh, the common values which in our case you already know it's five but that's something that we will not need right now and then we have the lowest value of our field so the lowest x value based on each mesh island so and then we would need something like uh, combine node that will combine our like highest x and our highest y and then we will have this vector that we will be able to plug into the center and now this should be working all right and as you can see it's working just the way it's supposed to so each of these islands are rotating around the lowest so the, the the highest x and highest y value so this is why it's a bit uh, confusing because <laughs> i have my viewport rotated wrongly but something like this if i set it like this and set the angle back to zero so the highest x and the highest y of each mesh islands so this is the highest here this is the highest here this is the highest here <laughs> and if we rotate it we'll see that that's exactly what's happening they're rotating around uh, that point we can we can change it we can set it to the lowest for example lowest and then it will do the opposite around that lower left corner and and you can imagine that this has a lot of lot of implementations and whatever you can do we are using a mesh island as a common value but you can use whatever you want you can just you can add for example an id to some part of the geometry and, th and then use the id as common value and you will always uh, have like this uh, lowest and highest value and that is practically it and now i'm going to show you just the principle of it of what happens inside this node so you can try to recreate ones yourselves and what happens here is pretty simple so we have a bunch of vertices you know these are all vertices of all of this geometry and we just use the number of these vertices to create a mesh line that has as many uh vertices as the entirety of that geometry has and we just create this mesh line uh, that right now has no start and no end but then it gets transformed into this but we need to look at from this side and so what happens here we have these two mesh lines that are that have as many vertices as our geometry has vertices 
and we're comparing this mesh line to these two mesh lines and let me just tell you what this line is so here we are setting this mesh line in a way that on this let's call it axis we are placing the common value so these are our mesh island indices so whichever vertex has mesh uh, island index of zero goes here uh, one goes here so all the vertices are here and all the vertices are here and all the vertices are here for the mesh island zero one two three and four and then on this like this axis we are placing the value of the field so in our case we are placing the value of the x position and then we're just comparing this mesh line with these mesh lines so this one and this one and as you can see this one is the one that is like on the lowest of all these values and this one right here uh, sorry this one is on the highest of these values as you can see right and why is that because we need the closest vertex to our reference mesh line and this is our reference mesh line and this is our this one so we have this line and we have this line and then we are just looking for the closest value to these points and this is the lowest value of the x field for each mesh island and um, where some problems can appear is when we have like a situation where where for example i'm just going to draw it again so we like here like this reference line then we have like for example this stuff like that and then we have like this and this and this and then you can see that uh, this is like the lowest value for this mesh island but the closest vertex is not actually this one but it's this one so what we, what we need to do uh, to avoid this problem we need to scale it all this graph let's call it graph all these mesh lines we need to scale it in this direction uh, as much as we can so that when we scale it like this then we're gonna have like this situation and so this one this value will indeed be closer to this vertex than this one and how do we do that we need to scale it so this is what happens here we need to see the the closest the smallest like gap between these two com common values and then we need to multiply it by the range of this value so the lowest x and the highest x is like this range which is something that we see here and then we need to multiply it by that value so we can scale it all along that axis and we don't get that problem the closest value the nearest sample point anyway so this is practically it once you once you get these two once you get these two lines so this one and these two you just need to sample the nearest index of these to the ones right here and then you need to capture that attribute and pass it on to lowest value highest value and this is practically it uh, I know maybe it's a bit complicated to explain hopefully the principles of it are quite clear anyway uh, you can download this uh, node from the description and this node will certainly be as I already said in the BB nodes add-on the next update and uh, that is it for this video uh, I, I realize now maybe that it's has been a bit complicated to explain and i'm not sure if i did a good job but either way thank you for watching and i will see you in the next one bye bye